Hey, what's up and welcome back to the channel. This is the Procon Geek and welcome back to the Procon Tutorials for Absolute Beginners in English video series. And this is going to be tutorial 7 where we are going to be looking at the analysis of a beam on elastic support module which we are moving on from the beam and the Kong sec modules that we looked at in previous videos. So also to better understand this video we're going to be looking at a bit of what are strap beams and how to design strap beams and how it ties in with the beam on elastic support design module. So without wasting too much time let's look at LS and a bit of strap beams in this video so let's just jump right into it. Okay, so like I told you in the introduction today, we just need to jump into the beam on elastic support design module and also look at strap beams. So this module, as you see, I already have it open on the screen. And this is the module that you use if you want to design any type of beam that will be on the ground. Now, examples I gave you in the previous videos or in the introduction videos was this could be the, the beam or the module that you use to design railroad tracks, even a base that is on the ground, even a wrap foundation if you want just a strip of it, not the entire wrap foundation. And also you can use it to design strap beams. Now, the reason why today in this video to better understand this module, I thought to myself, we should also look at what are strap beams and how they tie in into the use of this module. Because in order for you to best understand this module, you need to design an example or I need to go through an example so that you best understand what is everything that I entered here and how does it tie in on what, how do you interpret the result. So in this case, let's go back to AutoCAD and let's start looking at what are strap beams so that you best understand this module. Okay, coming to AutoCAD now, let's look. If you remember, I have a series where I was designing a double story building, right? If you want a link to that, I have put it in the description box below or you can also click above. I think I will definitely leave a link for you to click and you can go to where we designed the double story building but the reason why i'm saying that is because if you remember those who have been with the channel this is the building that we designed or the layouts of the building that we designed right which are the columns some beams and some bases so now what we need to do, understand is this setup right the setup that we had where we had our bases and our 700 strip foot usually works when for example let's just assume this line that you see in red which is dotted is the site boundary or the boundary or the pop property boundary for your building or residence or whatever you have. Now, since this boundary is a long way from your building, your bases or in instance, you can build anything that you want in this area and you will not have intruded into anyone else's private property. In other words, you're free to do whatever you want in this ground because all of this is your space. Now, let's take an example where you don't have the setup or you don't have there's much free room to play with and in that case you may have a setup such as this one this is where you need your building right in the red dotted lines but unfortunately this this is where your columns of the building or this is where your building needs to extend to and in this case if you want to have a padded foundation if it's a double story usually you want to have isolated footage because the ground may not be able to take the bearing pressure for a strip footing now normally the normal setup or the preferred setup is to have your column centered on the base. But the issue now is if you see, if we center our column on the base or if we have our base underneath uh, with the base taking the column at its center, all of the bases will protrude beyond the red dotted line. That is in this case, they will be now outside your property boundaries. In this case, you may now be encroaching into someone else's boundary. And in a case where maybe you have a road in the front, your bases will now be protruding or intruding into the service lane of the government, municipality or whatever a municipal authority is responsible for the area in which you want to build. So, as you can see, this setup is not desirable. And this is the reason why I have these two lines crossing out because this does not work and you will not get an approval if you take your design to the authority for approval. So what is the next thing that you can do? Well, people came up with a clever idea, right? To have your columns not centered on your base, such as you see right now, the columns in this case are now at either the extreme end or the corner, or they're just at the extreme center end. In this case, it's, it's centered, but it's at the center middle, not at the, it's at the center top, not at the center middle. 
So this is center top, center middle, center bottom, left top, left middle, left bottom. So as you can see, all your columns now are not centered on the bases and now all your bases are within your property boundary and no one can sue you for this and now the municipality can approve your designs if you have such a setup. But now, unfortunately, now because your bases are no longer centered or you, rather your columns are no longer centered on the bases, in reality, there will be a large force or the distribution of the pressures exerted on the soil will no longer be even because it's not centered. More pressure will be exerted towards where your column is now positioned on and the result is your base will now tend to want to topple. In this case, your base will want to topple towards the area where your column is and in this case, it will want to topple in this direction going to the diagonal position where my cursor is going in. Same applies in this case, it will want to topple towards the corner of the red line and your bases will no longer be that stable. So how do you cater for this or how do you counter this toppling effect that will be trying to happen? Now, the best way engineers came up with is to create what we call strap beams. In this case, what you can now envision is as if people are playing a tug of war with a rope. So this base has a tendency to topple towards the circle B and this one has a tendency to, to, to topple towards foundation layout text. So this beam will now act as an anchor or as a rope pulling, in this case, the force that is trying to topple this base towards the foundation layout text will now be pulling this base back into the property boundary. And the same applies. The force that is trying to topple this base will now be pulling this base back into the property boundary. So in, in reality, they will act as if two people are fighting using the tug of war to keep each other afloat so that they don't topple over. So as you may know, the force trying to topple this may be different from the force trying to topple this. So what you need to do is to design a rope or in this case, a strap beam that can withstand the forces that are coming from either direction and make sure that these bases remain in equilibrium and will be centered on the ground. So how do you actually do that now is where we'll be driving to. So also before we go, you need to understand you can either have a setup such as this one where these bases are just strapping each other and then you have a central base strapping this and this and then also this one strapping each other. Or you could have this setup where your strap beams are tie or actually tie the entire foundation together. In this case, this one is strapping this, this is strapping this, this is strapping this, and this one is strapping this so that you have a uniform. So this may be more expensive than this one, but it all depends. But then both designs are accurate and they will be approved at whatever municipality or authority that you'll be dealing with. So now we now need to see how do you actually design this strap beam and how you make use of the beam on elastic support analysis module. So coming back to AutoCAD, we now need to see that this is the plan view of our strap beams, right? In this case, you have a 1000, this base, right? It's a, let's just look at it. It's 230 in that direction. And it is going to be, this is actually not the base, but the column, the column is a 230 by 300. But in this case, what you're mostly interested in are the base. So this is in plan view. And this is an elevation view. So in elevation view, obviously you're gonna have the datum ground level. Then you're gonna have your column and your column going down. And this is going to be the base. In this case, a 500 dip base, 500 dip base. And then you're going to have a strap beam. So normally some people might have the strap beam at this level where they will have it just as 500 as well, as like this. But what normally you would want to do is to preferably put it a little bit higher so that in this case, instead of it just being connected to the bases, it also connects to the columns so that it starts anchoring the columns well before it even goes to the bases and provides more structural integrity to your strap beam, or should I say to your foundation. So in this case, the strap beam will be 1000, but it will be cast integral or monolithically with the columns and the base so that this will be cast as one single unit. So in this case, since it's going to be cast as one single unit, at the first 1000 meters, it's going to have a breadth of 1000, then it's going to have 300, then it's going to have 1000 for a distance of 1000. Now, why is this important? This is important because when you come to beam on elastic module, you now need to define the input and this is what we need to look at. So defining the input on the beam on elastic support analysis module is quite easy. 
first thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to look at this and then I'm just going to remove it so that we start afresh. So the first thing that it always asks you, right, is enter the length of your section. So in this case, most people will be tempted. In our case, also remember, this module, since it's in demo, will only be limited to analyzing strap beams or beams that are 5 meters long. So that is what we're going to be using. So in this case, what is L6? So as you can see, it already has a simple definition that you can enter to show it what you want. So obviously, L is going to be the over length of the beam. But in this case, since we have three sections, if you go to AutoCAD, in this case, you have this section, then this section, and this section. What you will do is, sorry, this is ProSec. Let's go back to ISEC. Uh, you are going to enter 1. Since it's 1 meter, then you're going to enter 3. Then you're going to enter, sorry, this is going to be 3. That's backspace. And this is going to be 1. Then the next thing you need to enter is the ISEC of the beam. So now remember, in elevation, as you can see, it's going to be 300. It's actually going to be 1,000 deep because it's going to start all from this place. And this will now be considered all part of the beam, but it's going to be 1000 deep, but then it's 300 wide at this section. So at this section, we're saying what is going to be the width of the beam. So in this case, since it's now considered to be the entire beam, what you're going to do is at this point, you put in 1000. So uh, at this breadth, oh, we wanted to put ISEC, but in this section, let me just show you what it will look. Remember in the previous video, we designed a 300 by 1000 section. So this is the section that we want. And remember, we wanted the moment of area. And in this case, it was 25 times 10 to the power of 9. So what you're going to do is, if you check, this is millimeters to the power of 4. But when you come back to beam on elastic module, it's meters to the power of 4. So all you have to do is to take this value and then multiply it by 1 times 10 to the power of negative 12. So negative 9 plus negative 12 gives you negative 3. So all you have to do is come back and add the 25 e to the power of negative 3 and if you want just copy this instead of having to enter it all over again and in this case what is b sec so in our case b sec in this case is going to be 1000 then it's going to be 300 then it's going to be 1000 so what you're going to do is please sorry uh, now we need to close process because since we are done with it we can close it then what you're going to do is you're going to come and then you're going to enter 1000 actually it's one meter and in this case it will be 0 0.3 because it's 300 millimeters and in this case it's going to be one right now what type of supports do you have in this case you have columns which are going upwards y stands for columns no y actually stands for rock intrusions then r stands for columns and then y r stands for piles in this case since you have columns what you're going to do is you're going to type r in this case and then you're going to type r and in this case what is the position of your support then go back to autocad and in your case it's going to be 115 or 0 0.115 meters. So you come back and in this case, you're going to enter 0 0.115, right? In this next support, do you have any columns in this position? No, you don't have any columns. So what are you going to do? All you're going to do is you're going to leave it like this. And then in the last part, yes, you definitely do have a column. So what you're going to do is dimension linear, get from this position to this position, and it's going to be 4885. So all you have to come back is type in 4.885 and you are done. Now, the next thing we need to put are the loads that are coming from the columns. So for this example, since I already know the limits of the demo or Procon in demo, we are just going to assume all of our columns will be carrying a load of 100. And in this case, 100, which we put for each respective section. And in this case, what is the distance? It's going to be 0 0.115. Remember, because it acts at the center of the column. We're assuming it acts at the center of the column. Then you also copy this figure and then you paste it over there. And also what we're going to do, since this is going to be a fixed support, we're just going to assume an arbitrary moment of 10, which will be at every support or at every column, wherever the column pins into the base. So copy that and then paste it there. Once you're done, you've successfully entered the loads. Remember, we don't have any distributed loads that we are going to be putting in the surcharge of the soil and everything. We can assume that and just take it off right now. What we're going to do is just design it for the strap beam we're showing you, but you can always incorporate it much further. But don't worry, we are going to be looking more and more at how to design strap beams and different examples, maybe with a full program activation, and then we will be looking at that much further. So don't worry about that. Now that you have entered everything into the program, the next thing that you would want to do since you go and you don't have any errors, also remember, that thing that you need to enter is to enter the E modulus of the beam and the K modulus of the soil. In this case, since you're going to be using concrete 
the modulus of the beam is definitely going to be 25 times 10 to the power of 6. If it is steel, it's going to be 206 to the power of 10 times 10 to the power of 6. Now, the key modulus of the so the list modulus that you can have is 4.8 to the power of 3. That is the list. But if your soil has a bearing pressure that is higher and higher, for example, 800 kilopascal megapascals or whatever it goes, you can use something in the range of 48,000. But I'll definitely put a table for some of the ranges of the modulus of the soil that you can use. But in this example, we're going to be using 4.8 times 10 to the power of 3. Then last but not least, are you going to allow negative pressures? Yes or no? In this case, we're not going to allow negative pressures. So what it just means, if you say yes, that means you're not allowing the base to experience any uplift. If you say allow negative pressures and you say no, what you're just trying to say is you're allowing the base to fail or to topple. So in this case, always say N so that you can allow the design to assume your base is able to topple. Now, once you're done, the next thing that you'd want to do is click on output. Now, as you can see, this is the output that you get. It shows you the soil pressure that is going to be experienced on all your bases, right? And then it also gives you the shear force diagram. That is the shear force that is going to be experienced in the beam. And it also shows you the bending moment that is going to be experienced in your beam. Now, all you want to do is to design, in this case, this will tell you the maximum moment that will be experienced if your base is going to remain intact without toppling or moving. And in this case, this is the shear that will be experienced. So now your task will be to note down these things and then design a beam that is able to take a maximum moment of 55.74 kilonewtons at 4 0.88 meters and also a maximum shear of 92.06 kilonewtons without failing. So that is all that you will need to do. So that is basically the design of how you design a beam on elastic support or how you design your strap beams. All you need to do is to make sure that you input a beam that stays on the ground that doesn't fail. And in this case, the output is just telling you this is what you need to design for if your beam is not going to fail. So in this case, once you're done, all you can do is go to the calculation sheet, right? If you want, you could always edit the header, load default, then you set today's date like this. Then once you're done, you can always print it out. Go to properties, pages, letter, then go to A4 if you want. Then you're OK. Then click OK. Then in this case, this is going to be strap beam. Uh, just say cancel. Wait for it. OK, we can always end the process. In this case, it has uh, ended our pro concession, but all we can do is go back. I'm very sorry about that. Click on an ALS, analysis of a beam on elastic module, and just wait for it to start up again. Okay, so we had a previous little mistake that happened when we wanted to print the beam. Now all we have to do is just reprint everything. So what we're going to do is print now, properties, pages, and A4. Then you click OK, then you click OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say ELS beam. Let's just change it to ELS beam. ELS beam 03, because this is what we did. And we're just going to click on save. And there it goes, it outputs the results for us. And the next thing that we'd want to do is just send this to the cockpit. And it will be sent to the calculation pad. There we go, based with two columns, which is okay. In this case, it's going to be a strap beam. So this has been it when it comes to the analysis of a beam on elastic support. Next, what we're going to do is going to move on to the next modules. And if you want us to cover strap beams or this module more in depth, we can always get a series where we cover it on its own. So thank you very much for tuning in. If this is your first time, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, click the notifications button, leave a like, leave a comment. And I'll see you in the next video, which is going to be tutorial eight.